Nigeria's First Lady Aisha Buhari has accused a close relative of President Muhammad Buhari of issuing a presidential directive behind her husband. In a statement she signed, she accused Mamandora of issuing a directive to a presidential spokesperson, Garba Shehu, not to recognize her office. It should be noted that it's not the first time the First Lady has accused the presidential spokesperson of trying to overthrow the president. Now, joining us to discuss once again, Christian Wogu and Shegu Chopita are still here in the studio. I'll start with you, um, Shegu. Yeah. I remember sometime in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, where we heard of the jackals and the hyenas <laughs> and, um, you know, the Lion King. It, it was <laughs> an interesting... Dramatic. Yes. And the, at that time, the president's wife had raised alarm that her husband's administration was hijacked by a cabal of sorts. And this is more like the obtained time she's coming. Is there, could there be an iota of truth to this claim that she's making? Or is this another form of distraction from the matter that is on the ground? This, this issue um, gave us, added another phrase to our lexicon in Nigeria, the Azarum. Az that's this, you know, this issue is the <laughs> genesis of, of, of the, the other room thing, right? Uh, where and, and that's what I was saying, you know, the president heard what his wife said, you know, a man like me, I'd get very upset and I'd do something. He just took it in his stride, whipped his assembly, cracked a little joke about it and moved on. Unmoved, right? Um, the, 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 the first lady, I think because this is, if there's an inner circle, this is the innermost person in the inner circle, or that's what it ought to be. So if she's saying something, we do need to take her serious. Um, Even when her husband has said that there is no such yeah, thing sure. as the office of I the mean, first lady, meaning that she yeah, has no yeah, say absolutely. in national well, matters? Yeah, but what she's saying now, I, have, I, I approach this issue from two angles. On the one hand, the facts and the um, innuendos and the insinuations within what she's saying, we have to take them um, seriously, because she should know. She lives there every day. She sees what's happening. Yes, she's not of office. She doesn't have an office of the first lady, but she lives in the villa with her husband, and she sees what's going on. So if she says there are people there who have hijacked the presidency from her husband, we perhaps should believe her. Now, what we will do with that belief is a completely different thing, because you know we have we have almost no say in the running of the office of the president on a day-to-day -day basis. We can only talk, and that's what we've been doing since she said this two years ago. Um, that's on the one hand. But on the other hand, I, I'm, I'm a bit, to be honest, I'm scandalized by her revelations, and I think they are absolutely inappropriate. I, and I want to speak in very strong terms. I think that this lady should understand that um, the role of a wife, it's, it's a partnership. You are the wife of a man. Your role in his life, generally speaking, is to support and prop him up and ensure that you are there to just keep him stable and, and all that. Mr. Lamb, she's raising and what if it is a way of supporting it, it, her It's undermining, you see, what, what this is doing is that it's creating an impression, whether that's what she intended or not. She's creating and strengthening an impression that President Buhari as a person is not in control of his government and of his family. Now, if whether it's true or not is a completely different matter. Even if it were to be true, you as the wife of a man, is it, is it in your best interest or in the best interest of your husband to project that terrible weakness to the whole world to see what do you want to achieve? Are we the ones that will make him be in control? Or should you perhaps be reaching out to people who perhaps has some sort of a say over him that can advise him, that can probably yank him a bit and say, guy, what are you doing? And all that, rather than coming to the public. I keep giving this example. If my wife wanted to say something to me about my conduct in my public office, and I hold quite a number of offices publicly, she knows how to do it. She's not going to climb the rostrum where I operate and say, this guy, you know, is whatever. It's, it's wrong. I want to ask a question. It's wrong. Hold your peace. I'm going to ask him that question. If a person, for example, let's, let's, let's use a totally different example. The man of many letters, the former president of Lucia Gwambasanja, who we know how, who knows how to write open letters. Mm. The question I always ask is, if a man resorts to an open letter, a man who sits on the table with the presidency when they have security meetings, of course has room to speak to the president, 
Could it be that he must have spoken, but the person did, the pres president heard but did not listen? Hence the reason why he has decided to take this route. That's my question about the president's wife. Could it also be that every time she tries to, I'm, I'm using his words, say something about what is happening, he just makes a joke about it and moves on. And she feels that this is actually not right. Hence the reason why she's coming to the media. Could that be the reason? Okay, Amiria, now my take is this. I think that we need to give some kudos to Mr. President here, as a man, maybe not as a president, mm -hmm. because um, really he's been taking these um, reactions from his wife with some kind of cool, and he hadn't done anything to her, and still gives her a lot of leverage to keep, to, apparently she could come up tomorrow with something else. Mm -hmm. Now, um, to that extent, I think that we, the president deserves some commendation. Now, I, I, I don't think, you, know, you see, we need to look at this much, as, as broadly as you want to put it. If every wife, the wife of a judge, tells everybody this is the weaknesses of my um, husband, the wife of a general overseer or an imam, goes um, to the street and tells everybody, oh, look, to the pulpit. No, that's going to be a real, <laughs> that's going to be a real challenge. So in a, there's no how anybody can run an administration, even your office, that you won't have people whom you're working closely with. Of course, with the privileged information of your wife, and if she wants the whole world now to know the, those working, and she came with quite huge allegations, things that are actually things that are triable. You know, things that are triable in law court. And uh, so we, I think that um, the wife of the president should possibly also call herself to order because the president had actually given the impression he did not want the office of the first lady. Now, she is saying that answer. it was the people around the president that made him not want it. But he, made, he has given us the impression that's what he wants. He wants, he wants the... No, he doesn't want the office of the first lady, but he wants the wife of the president. Fine, let Aisha be the wife of the president um, and find a way to convince her husband to maybe revisit that decision and create a proper office for the office of the first lady uh, and so that she doesn't heat up the system. The system is already sufficiently heated And this up. is the question I asked on social media to all my followers. Should we be worried about the presidency? I mean, we already have our worries in terms of the rule of law and, you know, lots of problems. But should we also be worried about the first family and how this would affect the running of the country? Should we be worried? No, of course we should. We should as much as because, you see, one way or the other. Now, what next could happen is maybe uh, praying to the gallery, the um, officer indicted by the wife of the president will be sacked tomorrow. And it, be, it, 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 it takes a, a kind of snowballing, a whole lot of other things happening. We should be worried. Now, but if you're asking whether um, how Buhari and Aisha live their life, they should live their life and just let us be. Because we have things we are dealing with. We are living our lives in our families. They but should, but and we the have moment you, you decide to lead a country or become a public servant, your life is no longer private. So whatever happens in your home, the moment you make it public to us, it's now our business, whether you like it or not, right? Yeah. So we should be worried. Yeah. Yes, but to the extent that you have made it public, we are saying, please, can you save us from those... Um... Well, I'm sorry, the, the, the milk has been spilled already. <laughs> yeah, but can you spare us from spilling <laughs> the sorry. milk? I'm sorry, can they pack it back and put <laughs> well, it in the pack? Well, they, I'm, they, I'm wondering. They can't, right? But they... they... I think it's more about what happens next than yeah. what has happened. That's because correct. like you say, you know, the, spe the milk is all over the table and it's messy. We don't want to know all of this. You know, it's, it's their private business. And I am actually worried more, less about the first family. I mean, if tomorrow the president decides to divorce the first lady, she, she's his wife. It's, it's his right. I don't really care. If he decides to take on another wife, like... Apparently, we married him off the other time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's his business. If he decides to marry a second one rather than another one, it's his business. You know, these are private issues. What, what I'm worried about is um, there is a subtle, 
you know, my colleague says we should give him kudos for allowing her just, you know, run riot like that. And I guess there's an angle to that, like, okay, you are a liberal person, she's your wife, she's got her voice, let her say her bit and all that, that's fine. But I also think that there's perhaps um, the possibility that the, the man is just not in control. I think so. He's not I was, in control, I was, I was, and, and that's I, disturbing. That is where I was coming that's from, disturbing. I was asking. Could there really be some sense to it that she knows what? Because before he ran for that office, she probably was in cahoots with him. They knew they had an understanding of sorts of what he wanted to or he set out to do. But she's seeing all of it diminish, and she thinks the only way to talk about it is to come to the press. I don't think the press is the next place for her to go. If if that were to be the case, and it probably is. Well, let's be honest. She sent a letter it out probably to the press. Is. Yes, I mean, so it's it's the worst move she could have made. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you've spoken to the man, I'm sorry, if you've spoken to your husband and he's not listening, I doubt if there is any human being in this world that doesn't have some sort of influence figures around him beyond the ones she's worried about that she could have taken this matter to. And what for if them she has speak. already? If she has and it's not happening, then there's a point where you say, okay, I've done my bit, no more. Some things you can't fall because, okay, now, the point is what she's done now, what will it achieve? I think there's, what another, will it change? there's, there's another dimension to it. <laughs> Maybe she's really being patriotic. Maybe there is something she's pointing yeah. Nigerians to um, beyond the family thing. And maybe she she's just doing something that, well... Um, you think there's a sabotage that yeah, is about to just, happen? There just may be. So maybe we should um, give uh, as much as we have looked at the family well, angle. I we, think this, uh, nationally. this issue leaves us scratching our head <laughs> yes. at the end of the day. Because what can we do? I mean, <laughs> exactly. so let's assume that what you say is right and she's doing this from a patriotic fervor and she now says to us, guys, it all is not well, though. some people are taking over and all that. Me and you as Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians, what can we do? It's well, happening in the state house. We'll keep asking the questions. <laughs> I want to say thank you to you, Shagun Chopitan, a political analyst, and Christian Wogu, legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen. A pleasure. Uh, pleasure. Well, we'll keep our eyes open and we'll keep digging. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus reports, and when we come back, I'll give you my take. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has said it has secured about 84 convictions in the Benin zonal area. The zonal head of the EFCC, Mukta Bello, while calling on Nigerians to join the war against graft as the commission marked the World Anti-Corruption Day, said the war against corruption can only be won with the collective effort. We believe that corruption cannot be fought alone by EFCC. We need to involve other stakeholders, sister agencies, the civil society organization, and other groups that are here with me. And that is why today, we decided to make this anti-corruption work a different one from the one that you have been seeing. Today, I will hit my chase and tell you that we have secured more than 84 convictions in EFCC. And if you can remember vividly, the last anti-corruption we told you we scored about 52 convictions. So you can look at the difference we did the span of few months that we have really made uh, positive progress. Like I always said, this is not the effort of EFCC alone, but this is a synergy between EFCC and other stakeholders. Whenever the body of Christ finds opportunity like this, we take advantage of it to help drum the fight against corruption. I must commend the AFCC, especially the Zona, um, Zona commander here, and of course the Atom National Atom Executive Chairman for what they have done in the time past, and also trying to do more. So we have come to join forces with them and to say we must put an end to corruption. We have seen that this country, God has blessed this country with all the abundant and human resources that should make this country to be a very great one. But because of the way we look at issues of uh, materialism and uh, we are too corrupt, and that is why we need to call ourselves together to be more patriotic, to play less emphasis on corruption and ma material words. If we are patriotic to ourselves, we are truthful, we are sincere, this word can go around the country, can go to everybody, so that we have sense of belonging, there will be less tension, insecurity problems here and there. Well, from the look of things, there's a lot for us as the average Nigerians to worry about. First, 
the rule of law is being pushed to the corner and things are being done at the pleasure of the president. Yes, of course, we also have our problems. But then if the first family is bringing their problems to the table, then of course we need to all worry. The wife of the president is screaming that something is really going on behind the scenes. She's saying this foul play. Somebody's going behind my husband's back. And we the people are wondering, if the first family has a problem, then it means we have a problem. Not like we don't have our own problems. Look at, I mean, we're trying every day to get the attention of our National Assembly to make laws that will benefit us as the people, laws that will make our life better, that, we, that would make Nigeria a better place. We're trying to get the presidency to understand that the rule of law has to be obeyed. It comes first before anything else. We have people who have been locked up in detention, even after court orders have been issued for their release. All kinds of things have been happening in this country. And it makes me really wonder, where are we going right now? What is going on in Nigeria? Our place is literally full. The bucket is overflowing. Where do we start to deal with Nigeria's problems in today's world? It's 2019. We're gradually getting out of it into 2020. The rest of the world is moving into pure democracy. And we're still here struggling with our nascent democracy. How long are we going to keep staying in this space and running around in circles? Well, the ball is in your court. It's in my court. We decide when this, all of this stops. And when we are ready, it will stop. I'm Mary Anna Combs. It's been Plus Politics.